Hey guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can deploy your Blazor server application to Azure. This is also the first episode of Azure App Services series. And in the series, we're going to talk everything about Azure App Services, like deployment slots, deployment centers, cost analysis, alerts, pricing tiers, everything about Azure App Services. To get started, we're going to deploy our bookstores application that we have been working on for seven months now and we'll deploy this bookstores application to Azure so that everyone can have access to it. For publishing, I'm going to use Visual Studio. So make sure that you have a, a Azure account so that you can sign in into Visual Studio with your Azure account. And then for publishing, I'm, I'm going to use free hosting plan so you don't really have to pay for anything. And then I'm going to talk about why it is necessary to use Azure Signal services instead of just using, you know, the resources which are provided by Azure apps. Okay, to get started, I already have um, this Blazor server app, which is which I'm going to publish to Azure app services. And this, uh, this bookstores application, uh, Blazor bookstores application, we deployed on our local host on IIS in last episode and which looks something like this. If I go to localhost, you can see that my app is working just fine. If I press F12 here to open developer tools uh, and go to console, you can see that it, you know, it has this WebSocket connection, uh, which is using the local host resources to connect to. And, you know, it uses signal or manage uh, connection to perform the operations. If I go to network tab, you can, um, you can, you know, refresh the page and go to this WebSocket connection and you can see the messages. So this is what we would like to do on, um, on our Azure app services, right? So to do that, I'm going to go to first, I'm going to go to portal, my Azure portal, and these are my all resources. I'm going to click on refresh and show you that I don't really have any I have a um, SQL database app service, which is an API, uh, which is a web API that we deployed. And then there's a SQL server, there's storage account, and there's app service plan. Um, but I don't really have any bookstores app created here. Okay. So uh, let's go to our Visual Studio um, and make sure that you have your Azure account signed in into your Visual Studio. And then I'm going to click on publish, which will open uh, the publish window. It, I already have a profile, which is a folder profile, which we created in our last episode to deploy our application on IIS on localhost. But we don't want to publish our application here. We would like to publish our application on Azure. So to do that, I'm going to create a new profile and select Azure and then go next. And here I'm going to select Azure app services for Windows. I have other options too, but you know, I'm just going to select windows for now. And then it will open up uh, uh, the form for publishing our application here. It will list down um, the subscription resource groups. If I have any, and you know, it'll connect to my Azure account and list down everything. Subscription is something which um, by default, Azure subscription one gets created when you create your Azure account, but I have renamed, renamed it to bookstore subscription because uh, I like to have my subscription project wise, because that's how you get billed. That's how you get invoices. And that's how I know for which project I'm getting billed um, by Azure, you know, because my billing accounts are mapped to my subscription. Resource groups are something which like anything that you create in Azure, let it be SQL database, Cosmos database, virtual machine, app services, signal or services, storage account, anything is resource. So you need to put that resource in a resource group and that resource group is mapped to your subscription and that's how Azure knows how to bill you. So that is important. I already have a resource group called as production resource group and I have my uh, bookstores API already there. Uh, but I don't want to use, uh, you know, I want to use the same resource group, but you know, I would like to create a new Azure app service here where I'm going to deploy my bookstores front end application. So I'm going to click on uh, uh, create new app service and here it will, uh, you know, give you a name, um, your name of the project and, you know, date time and date time in this format. So uh, that's how it knows that, you know, 
um, you can create a new app service here. Um, this has to be global name, otherwise it won't let you. So if I select this date time, you can see that this name is not available. So let's give it a good name here. I'm gonna name my app as bookstores um, app service. <clears throat> And I'm going to select the subscription bookstore services because, you know, the app service belongs to that. Um, and the resource group, I'm going to select production resource group because that's where I would like to put my application into. And hosting plus, this is very important. I created a hosting plan when I created my web API and I'm going to use the same plan to put my Blazor app services. But you can go to, you know, click on new and select different hosting plans here. And I'm going to talk you know, I'm going to dive deeper into this and talk about how hosting plans work and how you can use different plans to scale up for your app services. Um, but today we're just going to select free so we don't really have to pay for anything. And that's what, um, that what, that's what this bookstore's web API plan is. It's F1 and I've selected in East Coast. So it's a free uh, app service located in East Coast US. And let's go ahead and click on create. This will connect to my Azure services, Azure account, and it will create an app service. This takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to pause here and come back to it once this is done. Okay. Okay. So you can see that it created um, a bookstores app under my bookstore subscription. And you know, there are some deployment slots that we're going to talk about it in the series. Um, and the next thing that I'm going to do is just click on finish and which will create a profile, which will create a web deployment profile, um, uh, which, you know, there is like site URL, which we click on it, which will open the Azure app services that we created. And there is some warning that it says they're like service dependencies, but we'll get back to it later. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this link and see if my app service is up and running or not. So if I click on this, that link, you can see that it opens up um, um, bookstores app Azure, Azure website uh, .net, which is the URL for our bookstores application. And the message says, hey, app service developers, your app service is up and running. Time to take next step and deploy your code. Okay, so we just created a profile. We just created a app service uh, and we haven't published our code on it yet. If I go back to my portal uh, and refresh my resources here, you can see that Azure app service pops up in here. If I click on it, you know, and everything you can do, everything about um, app services that you can do on Azure. And you can, you can stop it, restart it, delete it if you want to. But this is the app service that we just created from our Visual Studio. Okay, so let's go ahead and publish this application, publish this application that I've been talking about, right? So I'm going to go and click on this publish. I'm going to go back to my Visual Studio and click on this publish. That will build my application in release mode and it will connect to my Azure account and published all the assemblies on my um, on my Azure account, on my Azure app services that we just created. Okay, so it publishes the um, whole application, uh, uh, you know, it publishes the whole application on Azure and it opens up our app services. You can see that bookstores, app, Azure website.net, uh, index page and you can see this application that we have been working on is on Azure and you I'm going to put this link in the video description so that you guys can have access to it too. Now, the most important thing here that uh, that I want to talk about here is um, if I go to console, you can see that you can't really see this WebSocket opened um for um just like if we went to our local host and oh you know open developers tools you can see this web socket here right but you can't really see that web socket here and if i go to network tab here and refresh my page um you can see that there is like a um negotiation um something negotiation is happening here which connects to yeah there it is 
which connects you know this is what it uses for uh, making the connection um, uh, to our app services to have that connection that to have that open connection so it doesn't really use a managed signal or service for performing our blazers or our application transactions and the worst part about it is if I, so this is one instance, this is one concurrent user, which I've been using, right? Let's open second one, if it works or not. The second one works fine. Third works fine. Fourth works fine. Fifth works fine. And if I put sixth one, you can see that it's not working. There's nothing getting shown on the page. And if I open developer tools, then you can go and see in console that it did not, first of all, it wasn't connecting to any web socket, but after some time, it will give an error saying that, you know, the handshake did not happen. The handshake was canceled and you cannot really do anything on Azure app services. And this is the reason why we should use Azure signal our services. But let's first talk about why this is happening. So I'm going to put this uh, link in the video description. This is um, this is the link to Azure service limits. So we are using free tier. And if I scroll down here to WebSockets, you can see that it uses only five instances per web per instance, uh, five WebSockets per instance. And if you want to have more, like if you want to have like 350, you have to uh, move to basic tier, basic pricing tier, so that you know um, you can have up to 350. Then there are unlimited if you're going to standard and premium. But if I don't want to, you know, pay for those services, what I can do, I can use free Azure Signal service to perform my transactions. Let's check it out how we can do that. So I'm gonna go back to my Visual Studio, and I'm getting this error because this is a preview version that. That doesn't really matter. But uh, to fix this issue, what we can do is I'm going to right click on my uh, project and click on publish. And you can see that it's giving me a warning saying that there are some uh, there are some dependencies uh, that your project have. And it'll be nice if you configure those dep dependencies. And if I go to service dependencies, you can see that there is SignalR connection here that you can use Azure SignalR connection so that you do not really have to like depend on the web sockets of Azure app services. So I'm going to configure this. I'm going to click on configure. And if you have any signal services, it will pop up here. You can reuse the signal services, but you can create new Azure signal services through Visual Studio 2. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on new and it's saying the name is already taken. It's it's like same uh, you know, just like we deployed our Blazor server application, we are deploying our Azure signal or services. So I'm going to select here book stores application, book stores signal or resource. And I want to put my uh, book store signal or service um, in the same subscription, same resource group, uh, same location, and the pricing tier is going to be free too. So we don't really have to pay for anything. I'm going to click on create. Once I click on create, this would take this takes a little bit of time to create Azure Signal service, uh, just like you know it took time for creating Azure App Service. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back once this is done. Okay, so you can see that it created this bookstore Signal R connection, which is an Azure connection. I'm going to select that, click on next. And it's going to show me the database connection string and the connection string value, Azure app settings. And you know, that's what it's going to, the reason why it's showing Azure app settings, is because when you run this locally, it's going to use your local resources. But when you run this on your Azure web app, it's going to use Azure app settings. That's, that means it's going to use Azure signal connection that you just created. That's pretty sweet. So I'm going to click on next. It's going to show me the NuGet package and app setting that it's creating. And then I'm going to click on finish which will you know install everything you know create app settings and everything and you'll configure my blazer uh, bookstores app profile with the service dependency which is my azure signal r service dependencies awesome right so i'm gonna go to my uh, azure portal here and then i'm gonna click on refresh 
then you can see this it creates this book, bookstore signal R connection uh, let's click on it and see how it, uh, what it says so if I go to my bookstore signal R connection and um, you can restart it move it delete it if you want to you can see the traffic which is going on right now and if I go to scale here it will show us that you know you have created this bookstore signal R connection which is a free tier and if I click on the free tier you can see that it gives us two options one is free another is standard in free you can have a single unit where you can have up to 20 connection uh, which is better than five just five connections right but then also it says 20 connection but when I tried it it was just 15 connections we'll check that out in our demo uh, you can have up to 20,000 messages per day per unit uh, it is SSL certificate and in standard you can have up to 100 units you can send up to you can have up to 1000 connections per unit you can send up to 1 million messages per day per unit if you, you know take the standard pricing unit okay so we created the signal art let's go ahead and publish this configuration the service dependency with this profile so that the uh, the Blazor application that we deployed on Azure, it uses Signaler connection that we created instead of creating using the web application resources, which just allows us five concurrent users. Okay, so I, I clicked on publish. It will, uh, you know, build my application, take the configurations and push it to Azure App Services, and then it will open up um, our Blazor server application, the bookstores application, and then we can test if we can have more instances more concurrent user with this um with this new signal R connection so you can see that it's working i'm gonna uh, open developer tools first and show you that you know you can now see the websocket which is this book no, uh, bookstore signal R service that we just created and you know even you, you can go to your network tab to refresh this then you can have this um uh this hub that it opens yeah, there you go. If you open this hub, then you can see these binary messages that is getting transferred. And now let's test if we can have more than five instances. So I'm gonna copy this two, I can have two, three, four, five, six. Now we can have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And it wasn't working for me for 16th one. Let's see if it works now or not. And it doesn't work for the 16th concurrent user. So they do say that it's 20, but it only works for 15 concurrent users. That's weird, but that's fine. Uh, so yeah, that's all uh, about how we can deploy your Blazor server application on, on Azure and how you can use Azure Signal services. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter, Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.